I'm Richard Porter. I'm Johnny Smith. And this is Smith & Sniff, the podcast in which two friends talk about cars and many other things. I said last week that um, uh, I wanted to, there was something I, I meant to talk to you about, and I made a note of it so I didn't forget, which is about Flowrider, the music oh, yeah. artiste. Yes, and that's right. I feel a bit foolish, but it took a long time of him sort of being, you know, in in the public eye before I realised that his name... is Florida. Florida. You can presume is where you are he's from. Absolute ass whelk. You didn't realise. Well, in my defence, <laughs> first of all, I probably heard him on the radio and they just go, that was Flow Rider. And I assumed it was F L O W and then R I D E R. Of course. But then I saw it written down. Now, I think it is written as two words, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Or at least yeah, it, has a, yeah. it has a capital R in it. But I think it's written as two words. So it's, it's Flow Rider. Might be Rider, hyphenated. Like, might yeah, be hyphenated, yeah, like a kindly old lady who makes lemon curd. Ooh, it's Florence. Well, Flor- Rider, Florence so. Rider. Yeah, yeah. That, that um, my my sister in law Lisa had a um, bought a Volvo, uh, not a Volvo, uh, a Ford C Max, and the number plate was Flo. So I used to call that the Flo Rider. <laughs> and, uh, and unfortunately, it, unfortunately, it died in a couple of months ago because it got ran for a while without any oil in it. Oh, the dips, you put the dipstick in, you lift it out, and it's as dry as a witch's tit. <laughs> unfortunately, how wasn't yeah. the light on? Apparently not. Oh, it came on at one point and then flickered and went out, and she was like, "Oh, maybe it's just a false reading." And I think, but this, I think to, to be fair to Lisa, it had started using a lot of oil unexpectedly, which, and she's normally quite religious about checking the oil. But it doesn't matter; it's all water under the bridge because it's gone, and she's got a Peugeot two hundred eight. So there we mm, go. Okay. So Flow um, Rider is no more. Is the well, may well, rest not, in well, peace. Not, not, not the guy, not the rapper. He has no, done some good stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, did he do Boots with the Fur? I'm trying to remember. Um, which is called? What is that actually called, though? Oh, uh, hang on, I'm looking this up now because uh, is it called Low? I think it's called Low. Uh, yes, Low, 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 Low. low, low. low. Yeah, it's no, just right. to confirm as well. It is written as two words: F L O and then new word R I D A. Um, and he is from uh, Carroll City, Florida. Don't know where that is. Um, I'd like his... to go to Florida again. I've only ever been once. Would you? And it was Ooh, very briefly. Humid. humid. Well, I told you I, I got offered weed by the taxi driver and he told me he shot a dove in his back garden and had it for breakfast. I told you that. So it's the first time <laughs> no, I ever went didn't. to America. I think I would remember if you told me. <laughs> it in was what amazing. Order? He tried to sell you weed and then told you he shot an etta dove for he breakfast. Actually... <laughs> He casually, <laughs> <laughs> was honestly, driving a you know a, a ex police interceptor Crown Vic, which was of on course. its ass. The springs at the back were obviously rinsed. Oh, it was hilarious! It was my first American experience, and I've, I have told you this story because we la- I landed with the photographer who'd been to the states numerous times, and and he just insisted we went straight out to a bar, and we were out <laughs> all night, and then we. We came in for breakfast in the morning, having to go on this shoot where we had to go up in an aeroplane and photograph skydivers. What? And, yeah, and we were uh, we were still we were so badly hung over. Both at the breakfast table, we ordered a full stack of pancakes, which I had underestimated the height of. Oh my god! And then I, halfway through, I had to run to the toilet, vomit, come back, uh, drink some orange juice, and carry on eating. And he went and did the same thing. <laughs> he was just. <laughs> was Where, just is this in Miami? No, it was in. I don't know why it matters. Day, it was I mean... Daytona. It was Daytona. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. It was Who just, are you covering just... this for? Uh, I can't possibly say because of the state that I was in. It would sound very unprofessional. Um, it was Mazda's okay. customer magazine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a long. It was a long time ago. To the point where we were we were shooting all the shooting all the pictures, the photos on on transparency. So that's how long ago mm. it was. Yeah, it's the, the good it's old the eighteen hundreds. Yeah, it was it was good. I was. It, uh, did you was, ever have a Mazda customer magazine story assignment where there wasn't some kind of hilarious no, mishap? No, no, there was always a mishap on every <laughs> Mazda story I did. <laughs> Johnny Smith's <laughs> Mazda mishaps this week. Johnny accidentally orders a tower block of pancakes and then pukes in the hotel <laughs> bogs. It was washes away it was the a, taste with orange juice. 
it was a real it, orange juice is too acidic post post vom i have yeah, to say sorry i apologize to and any- also it, it was it that really nice thick fresh pulp orange juice because yeah. you know florida yeah. they make the stuff oh they well, do they make oranges obviously but yeah they, yeah it's a very orangey place mm. oh that was it was it was marvelous it's one of the things um, that strikes you when you go to florida is how little scurvy there is around because of their um abundant supplies of oranges yeah, a lot of strange cab drivers, though, as it seems. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, shot, was... he shot a dove. And yeah, ate him he for did. Breakfast. He what died. The he... Freaking. Hell. In his own words, he, <laughs> said, he said, "He said, how are you guys this morning?" And I said, "I'm absolutely fine. How are you? All good." He said, "Oh, you're from England." I said, "Yeah." He said, "Oh, well, I, I, um." I, I, used, I, I grew up in New York, but then I moved out here. It's just so much warmer and more fun. He said, but I had the, I, I was in New York for the disco era. So immediately, quite a lot of information, mm. which I quite liked. Mm. And, um, but yeah, then he moved it on to say, yeah, I, 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 I woke up, I opened my blind, and I looked down the garden and the, or the yard, and there was two doves on the fence. So he said, and then he paused for quite a long time. And then he said, so... I shot him and I cooked him right up, right in there and then, and I had him for breakfast. And it was like, did you? Right. And that was the last thing I was expecting you to say after saying I saw two doves on a fence. And um, yeah, he ate two doves for breakfast, which I can't imagine would have been very nice. <laughs> but anyway, no. yeah. So that there was that, and then the sort of casual offer of weed afterwards. And um, and then dropped off. I think we used him again because we found his terminology so funny. We thought <laughs> hey, we'll just book him again. And I think we did use him again the next day. Um, what was quite funny you, is the photographer. Did you have to guess what would have been in his garden that morning? Yeah, I, I think I started recording his conversations because I'd taken a dictation machine for an interview with one of these skydivers that wear the bat suits. That was the point uh, yeah. of this feature. Yeah. Yeah, I was. Re- I think I have somewhere one of those, some of those micro tapes with conversations with that cab driver on. I definitely. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Wow. It was. It was a really cool trip. Well, it was my first American experience, so it's always going to be interesting. And I'm sure it's not an accurate reflection on the rest of the country, but um, yeah, nevertheless, really, really quite cool. Um, Talking of extraneous information, yeah. I was I was viewing a house the other week, and the estate agent told me that he didn't have a middle name. Just and it's just I. I, I <laughs> Why did why why do you what volunteer I, that? What can I do with that information that's just not relevant? What did what so what's the context of that? I mean, my daughter doesn't have a middle name, but does she not? No, but that's because we decided to give her two first names. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah, we decided to careful. hyphenate her first name, and we thought if we give her a middle name now, it's going to be complex. So yeah, let's yeah, just yeah. keep it. That was no, just I can see that's, artistic. That's, uh, it was a bit like yeah. Flo Rida. I mean, do, 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 does he does he hyphenate? Does he not? I mean, it was, uh, apparently not. In the end, uh, also I discover from uh, from Flo Rida's um, Wikipedia page is that he um, he performed at the 2021 Eurovision Song Contest. Rather did, bizarrely, did he? He featured on the song uh, "Adrenalina" by Italian singer Senhit, who Why? represented San Marino in the Eurovision Song Contest 2021. What? Oh, I don't know. Again, what do I do with that information? I should probably should have kept it to myself. But um, uh, anyway, the reason I brought up Flo Rider is just because once I kind of realised that his name is Florida split in two and therefore it's quite a good name for a, a rapper, but it's also represents where he's from. And I was trying to think of other US states you could do that with. And I got a bit stuck and I got as far as Kentucky and I realised that doesn't really work at all. <laughs> it was either that or Tex Arse. And I just thought, no, it doesn't. It's not. It's, there's no. It, it, it's no. It doesn't work it's at boots, all. <clears throat> boots. I'm trying to think of the Flo Rider lyrics now um, to, to Lolo. He does reference boots with the fur, Reeboks with the straps. And I always thought, I don't remember really strappy Reeboks unless they're kind no. of like you know like slut dropping kind of dance style does he style. mean like velcro strips that seal them Me- shut at the top like yeah. kids trainers is he talking about children's trainers for when they're too young to do shoelaces I think that's what it's or maybe too stoned to tie up a lace <laughs> so you is just that go, what oh, stoners oh. do yeah they you, just you can to spot re- if someone's a stoner because they've got velcro shoes of course it's the it's the it's the age old trick. I'm just looking at the lyrics to to Flo Rida. It's definitely got boots with the fur. Yeah, definitely. it is. It's um, it's boots with the fur, 
well, it's a shorty had them up apple bottom jeans. Do you remember that bit? Yeah, but I don't know what they are. I've never discovered what they really are. I, no, I it's like oh, trick, what's that song that has the it says something like back when honeys were wearing satsum, and it took me pardon. years to find out what that what that meant. Hang on, I'm gonna. F- I don't even know. Ha- this week in Richard just Google stuff while people are forced to listen to <laughs> it. Boots with the f- apple bottom jeans. <clears throat> Boots um, with the fur. It's just the sort of things that you hear Alan Titchmarsh what does it? talking do you, about. Do you want me to, since I'm just Googling shit, right? Apple Bottom. Oh, they're a brand. Oh, are they? Apple okay, Bottom is a fashion then. brand for women launched in 2003 by rap artist Nelly, along with uh, Yomi Martin, Nick Loftus, and Ian Kelly. Kelly and Nelly. Um, well, hang on a minute. So, right, okay. So, <clears throat> interesting. So he's just promoting a friend's brand. Of jeans. Now the other one, yeah. But back when, oh, where is it? It's California Love by Tupac. Oh, the lyrics are: "I've been in the game for ten years making rap tunes. Ever since Honey's was wearing sassoons, I thought it was satsoons, but I do remember looking this up. And it's a, again, it's a brand. It's like a clothing brand of jeans. Oh, okay, okay. Cool. That um, da- that dates it, referring to women as honeys as well. Yeah, yeah. That was a, that was a thing for quite a while. Uh, yeah, before that, the, I think it was hose, and then that was recognised as not being, not being particularly nice. Then I think it was diluted to honeys, and maybe it's I don't know what it is right now. Got no idea. There was that. What was the one that went? I've got hose in different area codes, and um, uh, yeah, that's but good. I always imagined it a much more wholesome version where he was talking about hose, as in you know those things that you use to break up Gar- soil, gardening implements, a garden <laughs> hose. So he's going. I've got hose in different area codes. It's like he's got a gardening business. But he sort of has localised equipment storage. Oh, that's a great so he can idea. have a smaller van. <laughs> what? So he's gone, I don't need the full-size crafter. I'm just going to yeah. go for something a little smaller, like a caddy. Exactly. Therefore, my fuel costs will be lower because I've got multiple implements around well, the county. I sort of felt perhaps even he's done the old just use a passenger car as a van. So he's got one of those. We've talked about this before. Oh, classic. Gardener cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah we have. <clears throat> but if yeah. he's storing his hose and, you know... Maybe some spades and forks and other items locally somewhere. Like he's got a mate in different in, in a different area code. Then then he can probably just have you know a saloon car of some sort. Yeah, it's funny you should say that because a car came the other way this morning. Um, uh, by um, do you know the company that make locks and safety equipment called Chubb? Yeah. Well, a, a car came the other way and it was an estate car with the back windows obviously. Uh, blanked over with decals or whatever and and, mm. and it was fully decaled up and it had a ladder on the roof and I thought that's a tradesman's vehicle but they've decided not to buy a van and it's not this... a car based van it it was a an estate it was a real estate car it was a it was a do, do they make an, a Megane estate they did do they still do I can't remember although it looked like a Megane yes, front end I think it's a Megane yeah. it was a Megane estate brand new or, or very new yeah. And I thought to myself, that's interesting in a world where lots of people go for vans. Mm. And not that long ago, when I did a car cave on a, that guy that collected Mercedes Benz, he said there was a very cool story about the Mercedes W123 estate in that it was originally home market only. And Mercedes in Germany refused to export it because they didn't see why anyone else would want them because in Germany they were only used as tradesmen's vehicles they weren't used really? as family cars because they said huh. oh, yeah f- families have saloon cars why, ah. why, would, why would a family want an estate was it, and, and one of the European um, or British importers it was in fact it was one of the British Mercedes um, MDs said this would work in the UK it's beautiful and they actually, they, they very, he had to be really persistent. So it could have never happened. The cool executive estate of Mercedes may have never properly been marketed. So, ah. Have you ever seen, they were big in France for a while, I don't think they are now, where they used to sell estate cars that looked like estate cars but were really vans and they had, um, so had no back seats. Blanking panels. Yeah, and yeah. black. Well, sometimes they didn't even. They just, but they would have like. I'm sure it was like something like the Citroen BX, where it just had no back door handles. So they were blanked off or something. Oh, it's so good, I isn't it? Proper cost cutters back. Yeah, I think they used to sell them in Ireland as well. Am I making this up? Or I know they did a Peugeot 205 van 
and they did yes. a Fiat Panda van, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. But they were like a strange glass fibre tailgate extension that you could fit the... on them. And it looked like it had a, a humpback. Yeah. <laughs> someone someone listening to this will know what I mean. I'm not making this up, I'm sure. Definitely on the original Panda there was that, because you, you see them, or used to see them all over Italy. Yeah. And the, the... 205, but you could get a proper sort of like big fiberglass kind of back on a 205 i think again yeah. but not here yeah and there's lots of they were kind of I've, i feel like in france i've seen sort of all sorts of slightly mutated cars with crudely applied but it turns out from the factory kind of fiberglass van extension bits on them i quite yeah and they're so i think they're a bit less so... fussy about their vans in continental <laughs> europe they just go it's a functional car i don't need it to look nice just give me the fucking van and over here we're a bit like mm, i want it to be nice i want a body kit on it now i want body colored mirrors no you bloody mm. don't it's just a you van don't. do you know something uh, i feel i feel like we have got too poncy with vans and um, and and this conversation about the extended tailgate, it reminded me, and I'm, 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 I don't know whether we've... I don't think this was a podcast conversation. I think it was just a you and I private conversation about the Saab to- Topola or Topola, um, which is like a clip-on camper body. Yeah. Which goes on the back of a hatchback Saab. So you take the tailgate off and leave everything else in place. Yeah. <laughs> and it just... <laughs> It's the it's the most contrived camper van, but it's hilarious. I feel like I'm. It's yeah, T O double P O L A, top of Yeah, well, uh, uh, yes, it's it, it's a magnificent thing. Talking as fit, we are again, second week a, on Saabs. Well, we need to stop right now, otherwise it's going to be classed as favoritism, and we won't be balanced motoring journalists. So let's immediately boycott. Yeah, Saab I chat. I can't believe that Smith and Sniff podcast. Uh, they must be being paid off by that defunct car company. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> they're well, who may or may not be making new new products under mm. Chinese reign? Who knows? I've just uh, it's, uh, talking about vans. You just reminded me. There's a, you know the band Half Man Half Biscuit. Um, who actually have got a new album out? Our new album was out the week before last. It's really good. Okay. The last track, particularly, is is um, epic. Um, anyway, if you like Half Man Half Biscuit, go go and check it out. I just started doing the John Peel voice almost there. That was um, very Peel. One of my favourite Half Man Half Biscuit songs um, from the past is Asparagus Next Left, uh, <clears throat> which is a fabulous song. I think it's off the Acton Bono album. And. Um, uh, but one of the lyrics in that is about it, it, it's what, it says whatever happened to the plumber's vans vans have become ridiculous <laughs> which I always thought is a, it's true it's, though is a, I don't think they're talking about trim levels so much as what's written on them but it's a very it's a funny lyric vans have become ridiculous I've been tooling around in a, a well a, a van based car people carrier this week which is what? um it's a it's a citroen um space tourer xl or sex tourer as i call it it's really really good because it's reminded me how useful and kind of brilliant at cruising they are and it, it don't get me wrong, i know they do an electric one and i'm going to be driving that in a couple of weeks but this particular one i just got in is is diesel mm. and it's a two liter triple which oh, I think is quite what? a large. I'm pretty sure is it's it? a two. I think it's a two litre triple mm. with a with a with a with a, with an auto box. It's it's very quick and smooth, but it does fifty to the gallon. I'm driving is it, around. Hang on. A, is it a diesel or petrol? Diesel. Oh God, a diesel three cylinder isn't <clears throat> that rough as assholes? No, it's not. It's not. It doesn't sound rough like like a lot of the sort of I think T6 transporters. I think they have a really vocal, mm. quite clattery diesel. This is not clattery. Because I haven't, I don't think I've driven a diesel three cylinder since the Hyundai Accent of the early two thousands, which had this little VM. I remember that. One point five little. Yes, it was, was one point five. Yeah, rigging up. It was like having a pneumatic drill applied to your head all the time. It was horrible. <laughs> I do remember that car because it was. I drove it. It was a two door. Yes. Or, or, yeah. It was. A, it was a fairly dismal car at the best of times, but then you you just basically. It sealed its fate as one of the most dismal cars in all of history by putting this pathetic little <laughs> jackhammer engine in. I remember having to rev it high. Just think now, you say that was at the beginning of the 2000s, mm. and here we are now with Hyundai bringing out unbelievable spaceships like the Ionic 5. And the yeah, Ionic, it's the true, Ionic. isn't it? They haven't they? Tucson. Haven't they well. 
Fev, some good, good product and all that. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree. They've they've definitely um, come a long way. Um, are, are you sure it's it's a two, a two look, litre look, three I'm, cylinder? That's... I'm going to look it up now, right? Because I've got the spec somewhere for it. Hang on, but it's definitely it's the Space Tora XL, so it's the longer wheelbase, seven seater. I'm fortunate it's been optioned, and I don't know why. I don't know why the Citroen press office or Stellantis. Oops, 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 oops. Yeah, yeah. Oops, oops. Ah. I don't know why they've optioned it in just plain white because it does just look <laughs> like a builder's van with windows. It, look, it looks like I'm taking my kids to school in like a carpet van. But it's um, yeah. Here we go. Hang on. So this is this. Oh, the, the, yeah, the, it says yeah. 1997 cc three cylinder inline direct oh injection turbo diesel. 177 wow. horses, 295 pounds feet. Do you know what? After this podcast, I'm going to pop the bonnet and I'm going to take a photo of the motor just out of silly curiosity. And it's an it's um it's an eight speed auto. I'm I'm pretty sure. But I've yeah. do you know what, do you know what, Rich? I've really enjoyed driving it. I have got a, just under 50 to the gallon. On uh, um, driving it, and also, um, of course, it's huge because it's got mm. massive tailgate. You know, one of those huge kind of r- rain covers, for horizontal tailgates that come out. Yeah. But the, I've realised amongst it, all of its practicality and its double electric doors and things, it's got, it's got quite an infuriating knack of providing nowhere that for a cup to sit. It's got what? one. It's got one cup holder up on the top of the dash, which is almost in your line of sight, and it doesn't fit any of my reusable coffee cups, right? Uh-huh. No, oh. and and then oh. and then in between the two front seats, there's a gap because you can kind of walk through to the back of the van, which is cool. But there isn't anywhere to put cups. Like all the cubbies are totally useless shapes. I've not found. I've, I, I couldn't put my phone in any of them. I couldn't put. I had a, a keys that were jangling in my pocket and were annoying me. Couldn't find anywhere to put that. And it was like mm-hmm. it's very odd. That is odd. It's very odd. There's a massive trap door at the on the top of the dash, but the the trap door is kind of. It's a bit. I don't know. It's just odd. The shape, the apertures are just a bit odd on that car. But everything <laughs> else, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed. And I checked the spec because I thought this is a big car, right? You know, it's, it's a big thing. Yeah. I know this is boring to listeners. I'll, I'll wrap this up. Trust me, I'm not going to go on about it. <laughs> but I, I, you, you look at it and you go, how heavy is that? Yeah, that's got to be over two tonnes because it's huge. It's really big. No. 1,760 kilos. Mm-hmm. Right? But it's got, it carries seven people and the boot's colossal. You know, like it's... I think it's uh, over a thousand liters of boot space, right? With with seven people in it. Have you borrowed this for a reason or just for shiz and giggles? I borrowed it for a, um, a small reason in that I, I do want to test the electric one, but I wanted mm. to try the piston one because I wanted to see if it was actually any good. Because you know I don't totally discount diesel cars these days, but I I suppose I'm I'm quite picky about whether they're up to the job or not. Mm. Um, and definitely short journey diesels are a waste of time. But having done quite a few miles in this unexpectedly, I'm really down with it. And I also, I love the... I suppose it's coming out of the VW ID buzz as well. I just suddenly went, what what, what are other manufacturers up to with MPVs? Mm. What's the standard right now? Because everyone yeah. seems to have forgotten. Everyone just defaults to the SUV thing and and settles for higher driving position but less space. Why don't we have higher driving position and more space, a.k.a. <laughs> the van with windows <laughs> yeah well i found that even before i you know i saw your id buzz review but i was looking at i read a review of the what are they calling it now the multivan what's the yeah you got the t7 they've split the transporter multi- haven't they into so that the yes the next transporter will be related to the ford transit and the new is it is it multivan the sort of people carrying yeah, version the, the is actually just a golf underneath. Sort of. That's right. So that's based upon the um, the car platform, and it's called the T seven. Yeah, it's called the T seven multivan. Whereas the the transporter is the T six point one currently. Uh, okay. So yeah, it's a I guess it's type six. Uh, sorry, type seven. If you and the multivan yeah. is a prettier looking. It's a pretty look, prettier looking van. Yeah, I was looking at it and slightly smaller uh, and reading this review and just going, why is this car so incredibly appealing? Because I don't generally like kind of that kind of stuff. And I just went, why do I find myself sort of just low level wanting one of these? I think it's partly it's being I just got all 
or dad about it and just it going, is well, dad's back that'd be yeah. that's such a good dad car you just think oh all the things we could do in it we could drive about in it but then stop and sit in it i mean <laughs> it well, is it's the happened. picnic it's the picnic on the move it's the yes it's the i could get dressed in the back of it let's just think yeah because i'm always getting dressed that. in the back of cars in case <laughs> always in case i saw myself on the hard shoulder easy i can sort that out no problem i think and it's also when i was tooling around in it even though i was most of the time there were only two of us in it mm. i just kept glancing in the rear view mirror because it's got two rear, rear view mirrors remember that you've got the one that's kind of fish eye for looking at young children and oh I yes don't know, rogue dogs or whatever yeah and then you've got the other one which is a, is a normal rear view mirror and i was like this is easy to park because it's completely slab backed so i don't i has mm. got a camera but i've not used it and it's such it just maximizes the wheelbase of the car and and i the joy of it is you feel like you can kind of do everything in it so therefore that's why i, I mean i guess that's why the the id buzz appeals to me because you go you could do all that and it's electric so mm. all that weight slow down quite a low um quite a nice flat floor you you can go full on camp ideas of camping maybe not reality of camping does anybody? Uh, let's make MPV call MPVs cool again. Well, if anything's going to do it, it will be the ID buzz. Yeah, I but, mean, not um, in a sort of American Astro, Chevy Astro kidnappy way, because they 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 are a bit. <laughs> I don't miss any of those. Or is it? Which is the really sorry looking one? It's the Ford Aerostar. It's just yeah. honestly, it's got such a sad face. <laughs> it really has. I don't know. American or Canadian listeners can vouch for it. It's just a sad looking van. There's yeah, the, uh, some of them. Those later ones, those nineties. When you know, when we talked before about how uh, particularly American car design really embraced the softness that was fashionable in the nineties in Very. in car design. But some of those MPVs <laughs> in the US minivans, I guess they'd be called in there. Just they just looked soggy. They just, they just went. Ugh, I bet yeah. That, that, they look soggy, and then the interiors always look sticky. Yes. I just, and also, as they get older, yeah. you just go, that smells. Look at that. That <laughs> car know. smells. It's Don't like, go near it. It stinks inside. It's like a sort of singlet vest, which has been sweated in for four days nonstop, yes. and then never washed. Just put in a tight little bag, zipped up, and no one's ever gone near it again. Or if I you're if you're prone to doing exercise, have you ever had one of those T-shirts where it gets to a point where it's been sweated in so much that you can wash it? But as soon as it gets any warmth from the body, it starts to smell again, and you just That's have true. to throw it away. Yeah, I've got it's like, like that. yeah, it's my the interior of one of those vans is like that. Very, it's very Sarsons, very sort of chip shop vinegar. Yeah, <laughs> You've got to be careful of it. Yeah, do you know what? It's talking of people carries. It reminded me last week. Um, also, I, I did the the Morgan. Uh, the, 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 yes, the, the three wheeled Morgan unveil. Yeah, I yeah, was yeah. I was asked to do it, and and the I won't. I'm not going to name names, but during the course of that evening's activities well hang on so people who people don't know you made a video about the morgan for the late break show but you were also the host of the official presentation of that car yeah so i made the video and once i'd filmed the video and done all the walk around and stuff i got they asked me if i would unveil the car to their kind of suppliers and Mm. you know so yes it was a it was a it was a it was a a corporate gig but it actually came about after i'd already done a video so it was Ah. actually good fun they're a jolly bunch, Morgan, and I think they've done a yeah, good job yeah. on the car. But um, I, I'm not going to say they're associated with Morgan, but I met a PR that night. Yeah. And she said to me, she, we were chatting about this, that and the other, but she said to me, um, oh, I don't, I, I don't know much about cars and things, but I know that my dad used to have a lovely Porsche and, um, and <clears throat> he, he's never quite forgiven us as children it was, she had a brother as well i think because he had to sell his impractical inverted commas porsche to buy um, a family car when we were born and he went get this not only that he said he's worked out that, that his car was if he had it now would be worth well over a million euros so i think oh. it was she said it was a 964 and i think it must be an rs yeah or, or so, so it, she said money. it was she said it was a very very limited edition kind of racy one which he loved he sold it right back in the time when it wasn't worth a great deal <laughs> what what did he buy what did oh. he buy did, bearing I mean, in mind I've, the subject that we're on the the the, 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 the subject that we've just been talking about well i just I, 
so I was sensing that he just went right. Well, that's it. If I can't have the Porsche, I'm just going to give up and have something that's the the antithesis of, let's say, a 964. Oh, and it's the 90s <laughs> then, presumably. It's, it's the 90s. Yeah. It's the oh 90s. gosh. Um, uh, think, think early days of um, of the uh, Apprentice. Oh, uh, Chrysler Voyager. Yes. Yes. Oh. A jelly, jelly mold Voyager. Oh. <laughs> was, was tell me it was the V6 that did about it, four miles to the gallon. It was. It was the boat anchor V6 that oh, ran on twelve right. run fuel. And yeah. Was it yeah, ran on twelve run fuel? It was a three point three, wasn't it? As well, so stupid capacity that doesn't make any sense. And it made about a hundred and fourteen horsepower, but it did seven miles to the gallon everywhere. Yes. Dreadful. It was. It was. He bought one brand new, having ah! sold a nine six four RS. Again, I'm not going to name any names of who this person was, but needless to say, the dad to this day is gnashing his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> That's. It's the, sad. It's very sad. I know someone who, uh, whose, da- whose dad, is the former owner of that Ferrari two fifty GTO that Nick Mason now owns and which, you know, is frequently seen in magazines and such like. Really? Yeah. He sold that car to Nick Mason in the seventies. For like for, what? For like ten grand. Yeah. Shit Genuinely, hell. I think it was like twelve grand or something like that, which seemed like quite a lot of money at the time, but not an insane amount of money. He sold it so that he could pay for this person that I know to go to private school. You are pissing on my eyes. And whenever her career maybe seems like it's not going so well, he reminds her of what he did to fund her education. Oh, my <laughs> so gosh, wow. He just basically gave up millions of pounds in the present What's it, day. What, 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 what is it, 20-something million probably now? Oh, I don't know now. I mean, I was going to say, I'll have a look on Auto Trade to it's see how teams. many for sale at the moment. It's, yeah, go on Gumtree, see if Nick Mason's got I, bored. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> no, he's, he's a Facebook marketplace kind of guy, is Nick Mason. <laughs> he's always putting needed. old drums up there and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Roger Waters has written on this one oh Sid Barrett scribbled his name on the bottom of this one so I'm getting rid of it because it's ruined it's uh, cheap, I'll take a yeah. fiver if you can come and collect yeah yeah he's I think we've talked about Nick Mason before I've only ever met him once and it was at the Le Mans 24 hour and um he 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 he, he it doesn't smile a great deal but I don't know if that makes him miserable I don't think he's miserable I no. just think he's an occasional smiler He's an occasional smile. I, I've met him quite a few times, and I've found him to be a very nice bloke. And okay. he has an incredibly dry sense of humour. Oh, uh, well, I, I, that's good. That makes me feel glad. You just reminded me about, actually, I was driving to a barn find job yesterday in that in said sex tour at XL. Um, I was going to, to Yorkshire. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, the, um, I set off really early, so I was a bit tired. And I decided, you know when sometimes, I don't know if you did it as kids, if you're at the back of the bus and you just waved at random motorists and pedestrians just to see how they'd react? Yes. I decided, not, it's not quite as weird as that at all, but I decided, I, I looked at my watch and thought, okay, for the next, I've got an hour and a half before I get to the destination. I'm going to mm. smile all the time. And I, <laughs> and I did. Even when I'm just listening to the radio driving, I just thought I just thought I'm going to default. Because you know, there's there's smilers in the world. There's natural smilers, isn't it? We've all we all know somebody who's a natural smiler, and it's a great yes. thing. Yeah. And I, so I just sat there at the wheel of this white Citroen people carriage, just constantly smiling. I'm just a constant is it, smiler. Is it? But like, you're no no offense to you, but you're not a constant smiler. Nor am I. Um, no. Did you not? As a non-constant smiler, did you not find constantly smiling quite tiring? Yeah, it was really quite a challenge. But like, that was where the your challenge face I... went into a spasm, and then you were on camera having to try and pretend that I... you, you <laughs> got some kind of rictus. <laughs> Do you know what, it was outside. actually difficult, and I occasionally I looked in the rear view mirror to see if I just looked like a complete prance. But I, I looked all right, and I thought, yeah, I'm just going to do this more often. And actually, that might be a belated New Year's resolution for 2022. Just do some like, just do some non-stop smiling yeah. for no for no reason. You don't have to talk to people. It's just the, no. just walk around with a smile. Um, maybe sit at your computer with a smile, although it does might look like you're trying to push out a cheeky guff. Yeah, um, you know, and, and you're trying to kind of I, <laughs> control think you're up to something. <laughs> yeah, they people do think you're up because people. Someone will come over and go, "What are you smiling about?" Because sometimes I do that. I suddenly remember something, and I, I've realised 
uh, my wife tells me <laughs> that I involuntarily smile, and she'll go, "What are you smiling about?" And I'll have to go, "Oh, I just yeah. thought about." And it's usually something really crash. The other day, thankfully, there was something we've in the talked house. about on this bloody podcast. So I'm well, really yeah. Worried. The other day, I couldn't stop smiling. I started laughing to myself. I remembered that joke. Where the Eskimo takes his car to the garage and the mechanic goes, It looks like you've blown a seal. And the Eskimo goes, No, it's just some frost on my top. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> because, and the bit I couldn't stop laughing about oh is, that, gosh. is that rather than accept that it's just a joke and it's whimsical and exists outside of reality, I was thinking, well, if, if you do. If you took your car to get mended and a mechanic accused <laughs> you thought a mechanic was accusing you of sucking off an animal. <laughs> like, what a weird situation that would be. <laughs> that was <laughs> misunderstood. <laughs> you thought you were being accused of pleasuring a sea creature. <laughs> 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 By dint of of this over analysis of that stupid joke, I, I was I was properly laughing to myself. Well, I, I am now. No one home, so that was okay. I actually thought the other thing about constantly smiling is. Um there are certain cars which probably make you do that, even just by their very existence and driving around at, at not particularly quick speeds. And I think the Morgan, three wheel mm. Morgan, is one of those vehicles. And I, 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 we must go on a road trip in one one day because I'd like to just. I'd like you to just shout tally ho constantly in my ear. <laughs> pip, for no, pip. For no reason. Yeah, that's the only thing about that, isn't it? That basically they've designed that whole car. They're, they're, they want you to wear a flying helmet while you're driving it. They, they do. They and really I sort of feel do. like that Morgan, really, all of their cars are just an excuse to wear a hat, aren't they? It's cosplay. It's a cosplay car. They're cosplay cars, yeah. It's sort of cosplay because you can be you know, the mad man of the manor um, or something like that, but also I think it's it's jolly, it's just jolly escapism, isn't it? It's uh, like it's like buying a classic car of a certain era and then just going, yeah, I'm going to dress up like that. I don't care. I, what the hell? I've just, I've just remembered <laughs> something someone told me last week. Not another joke about doing fellatio <laughs> with a seal or something. Yeah, yeah it looks like you're <laughs> giving a hand job to a walrus. Walrus, uh, no, wanking a it, walrus, wanking a walrus. <laughs> <laughs> no, someone I can't say who or what this was, but but basically they were in a situation where two very wealthy young I think, I Japanese men turned wealthy, up at this event. Lovely and they were, young Yeah. Japanese. They were both head to toe in tweed. This was oh, in this yes. country. So they'd basically gone cosplay. I think they'd gone, Oh well, you know, we're gonna be in England, we should look like English gentlemen. So they were they were wearing, they were wearing full tweed suits, like three piece suits. That's got to be Morgan. But apparently that's got to be Morgan. Well, they'd be Morgan. They'd be. I imagine they would be very delighted to go and see this Morgan because it feels like they've already got in the zone. Maybe they were on their way to go and see the Morgan, but this was at something else. But then apparently one of them sat down and had lunch, and he ate his entire lunch wearing mustard-coloured driving gloves. Oh, amazing! That's amazing. <laughs> I know. Did he then get into a it? yeah a Mitsuoka Vute and then drive? Oh, that would have been which quite would have a thing. had which would have had lemon leather interior <laughs> yeah I, I was gonna say a resto modded view but it's almost like they are sort well they're not resto mods they're something else aren't they? but how would you resto mod a view because it's already sort of there for you isn't it it's got it's arrived at the point you'd be trying to achieve because it's got modernity put, sort of you'd have to make it fast and four-wheel drive or something wouldn't you when i say four-wheel drive i don't mean like off-roady i mean just rapid but wouldn't you I be don't. able to have a four-wheel drive view? Because I think they sold four-wheel drive micros in Actually, Japan, I think they did, they did do four WD micros because the you could get a four-wheel drive cube. When we bought our imported cube, there mm. was a rare option of an all-wheel drive one, but it was just, a, I don't know, a power-robbing waste of time in my eyes, so I didn't bother. I just had it and yeah. put winter tires on it. don't need it. I don't, don't know. Power it's robber. I don't. I power robber. Power, power, power robber. robber baron. Robber, robbing the power. Robbing the power. the people. Uh, actually, that reminds me. You know, you're talking about vans, the cars used as vans. Yeah. That is how Subaru came to be four-wheel drive. Because oh. a Japanese power company, like an electricity company, were they wanted their engineers to have something that was more comfortable than a van or a pickup truck, but they still needed the ability to drive across a field if they needed to mend a power line. So one of their representatives went to the local Subaru garage and said, 
is there any chance you could make one of your estate cars four-wheel drive for us to see how it goes? And they went, yeah, okay, we'll give it a try. And it worked really well. So they Bloody sold a bunch hell. of those that they converted to four-wheel drive to the power company. And then they took uh, they took one of them to Subaru head office and went, look what we've done. And Subaru went, oh, that's a good idea. That's a bit good. And that's how Subaru became synonymous <laughs> with four-wheel drive. Yeah, you can't really say Subaru without thinking about all-wheel drive badges, mm. can you? Yeah. It's just yeah. impossible. In fact, you I know think... what? Why, why don't Subaru just stop being silly and just make the Brat <laughs> and a boxy <laughs> estate again? I reckon if they did the Brat for the US... Yeah. Uh, another weird bit of trivia about the Brat is that the Brat was never sold in Japan. It was never sold in Japan. No, it, bizarrely. It was an export-only model. But um, That's brilliant. Yeah. I know it's big, big in Australia, in US. big in yeah. the US. So if you made it now, those markets would probably lack them. I think them. so. Maybe so South you, Africa as well. Yeah, well, that's it. I sort of feel like if you, that Ford <clears throat> Maverick seems to be going down well in the US. So clearly there's a sort of appetite for slightly smaller unibody pickup trucks. Listen to you with your, you, 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 your terminology. That's so American. <laughs> is that yeah? It is American, isn't it? Uh, okay, yeah. a monocoque. Uni, yes, unibody versus monocoque. It it just sounds like um, a low end sort of MC battle. Um, yeah. that not, <laughs> not many people would know. Unibody V. It was one of those posters that's always at the traffic lights that we talk about. Yes, you know, like a, yeah. a club night that you probably won't go to, but it sounds interesting. Yeah. I, I've missed seeing so many of those in the past two years because obviously club nights haven't really been a thing. So no. it's, I, I'm hoping now there'll be a it's resurgence off of now. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't I haven't seen many around, but I'm, I'll, I'll keep them peeled because I'm sure they will start springing up. I'd like that. I think that'd be quite cool. Mm. Yeah. Um, I was now what else? Because there was something else I wanted to mention. Oh yes, it was what you you it, when you messaged me yesterday about seeing somebody with their wipers on all the wrong sides. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I wrote it down. Everything. I thought I'll bring this up on the podcast. <laughs> I totally forgot about that because it was it made me. I, that was when that was during my hour and a half of non-stop smiling. Actually, uh, <laughs> that was the same trip. Welcome to Radio Two. Coming up next, Johnny Smith with the non-stop hour and a half of smiling. Yeah, that's not honestly. a bad idea. Actually, you just play really up-tempo, cheery songs for ninety minutes. I thought oh, maybe I'll do that. Maybe that's my missed vocation thus mm. far. Hmm. non-stop smiling tunes uh, coming up for the next hour and a half nothing depressing i promise <laughs> yeah well um well okay here's what happened so i was i was i was making good time having le- uh, left early and and yeah. all, all of that just got ripped into tatters because the a62 gr- gr- grinded to a halt and you know when you'd go, you're going past another car and then that goes past you and you're all doing about kind of 10 miles an hour whatever 15 miles an hour and I, this this guy, I was behind him for ages in a Fiesta, mid two thousands Ford Fiesta, and it it was it was cold and it was very sunny, but it was not wet at all. There was no rain. There was no, there was no water on the ground, and he had the, <laughs> had the windscreen wipers on on full speed. So what number two setting? I'm mm. guessing, mm. and the rear wiper. <laughs> The rear wiper was on intermittent. And at first I thought, oh, I, d- I didn't see. He probably just used the wa- the washers, just cleared his screens, no problem. But after about five minutes, I realised they were, they were all still on, furiously going at it. And there was there was just complete dryness. <laughs> and then, I guess 15 minutes later, that's when... 15 minutes later, that's when I was like, there's something wrong. Something's going on here. So I went into the neck. I indicated slowly and went into the other lane and managed mm. to go alongside him. <laughs> and he was a very big guy, right? And it looked like he was fumbling under his, under the chair, under this car seat for something. You know, like he dropped his phone or he dropped, I yeah. don't know, he yeah. dropped some sweets or something. But it had been going on for so long. And even when I was next to him, I actually made full eye contact with him, thinking, <laughs> he's got to know there's something wrong here. Like the front wipers must be squeaking like an absolute no, swine. It's the noise. Unless he's got brand new wiper blades on, that's going to be scraping like a bastard, isn't it? Yeah. Or he's siliconed the whole lot, so it's just all smoothly gliding. But I mean, oh, seriously, maybe. it was just going and going and going. And even after I was next to him for ages, it must have been going, Richard, On honestly, for 25 minutes. <laughs> dry. <laughs> dry on, on on high speed 
And I felt, I, I almost felt like, you know, like when you make eye contact and you do the pointy thing, like, I think, th- I think there's something Your wrong. Your wipers are on. I think there's something wrong. It's, it's not fucking raining, is it? It's not <laughs> raining. So what's, he, what's going on? <laughs> Johnny Smith, wiper police. Yeah, it's, it's such a neighbourhood watch. I'm sure people listening to this have experienced something like that. It's because it's yeah. just weird. I isn't had a it? mate who used to do it. I mean, not where he just put the wipers on inexplicably, but he was he was just incapable of choosing the right wiper setting. So if it started raining at a sort of persistent drizzle, he he'd ramp it up to option two. Oh gosh! And the wipers no. would be flapping away, and then the rain would cease, and he'd just leave it like that. He wasn't a natural driver, I would say. And he would often just leave the wipers, but he would always pick the wrong setting. It's one of those situations where you you think oh, it immediately worried me because I thought I don't want to be driving behind somebody that is not paying any attention to driving to the point where the thing in front of them is just flailing left and right for no reason and they don't, they aren't bothered. Mm. So what else is going on? Yeah, you know, has he got like a cat under his seat and he's trying to hook it out? Or I mean, he's just dropped some acid and he believes that he's driving through torrential rain. <laughs> or torrential rainbows. He's trying to yes. swipe them out of the way. <laughs> he just thinks that caterpillars <laughs> falling endlessly get from the, the sky. Get them out. Swipe them. Get them out of the way. <laughs> get, cut them down, bastards. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's uh, I, I, also that puts me in mind of another. Uh, the, the, the other thing is, I'm trying to think of situations in which I have manoeuvred my car or even taken a different route purely to see something that another motorist is doing. Like what? Because that's essentially what you did there, isn't it? You changed lanes purely to get a look at this guy and see what was what. Oh yeah, I yeah, think yeah, yeah. I've, I've definitely. I think. I've, I do it last week where I, I deliberately I could have turned off to go the most direct route back to my house. You know, it's only about a mile away. But, but I didn't. thought, but there was some, there was a, a really nice Rover P6 making oh. quite a fruity noise, and so I just like I thought, well, he seems to be going straight on for a bit longer, so I'll just follow him because it was just nice to see. He's going. very nice. It was a good. I, I was trying to work out one of the reasons is I wanted to work out if it had been lowered. It looked like it had been lowered a little. They're bit. They're quite a nice. It's like. Um Jag XJs, early Jag XJs, because they sit right, they sit mm. well. They, there's not a lot of arch gap. It's yeah. quite a pleasing stance. Yeah, as, yeah, straight out of the factory. I do like a P6. We've talked to P6s, I know before. It's yeah. a bloody, bloody cool car, and such an engineering masterpiece. In fact, that mm. gets yeah, often yeah. gets ignored. But um, no, love them. And I, I, I've mentioned that there was that one that was for sale down in Crouch End, right by where you used to live. Although I didn't know you used to live there at the time. Yeah, and, and it wasn't um, me. Yeah, it it had me. a for sale sign in the window, and it, we, my wife and I were just walking to the pub one night. This was years ago before we had kids, and um, and I went, "Oh, look, the car for sale!" You know, sort of got distracted just looking at the sign in the window. And my wife went, "That's such a cool car," which I didn't expect her to say. Oh, but she she thought that, and this was like a sort of. Just an ordinary. It was, a, I think, it was a two-two, so it wasn't yeah. a V8. And I kind of, and then I got a real hankering for P6s, and I almost there was a lovely V8 for sale down in Kent, and I'd arranged to go and see it, but Kent being an R sake to get to from everywhere except Kent, I just I couldn't find the time to do it, and then it sold, and that was it. And I sort of the trail went a bit cold, and I just didn't buy one. But but it was Easy. weird. It was just one of the things where I suddenly went with her kind of enthusiasm for it. It sort of tipped me into a into a, a kind of quest to. Buy one, you could have fed off fancied. that. You could have fed off that and made yeah, a purchase. Maybe one day, one shall day. we? I think when <clears throat> when Smith and Sniff is I don't know a staple on Netflix. I think we'll both <laughs> should we both tool around in really well turned out P sixes, or think, we'll buy them through a company. <laughs> They'll be company cars. Yeah, <laughs> company cars. You could have a P six and I'll have a DS. I think that's a wonderful idea. Because basically P- uh, the Smith & Sniff yeah. fleet is consistent to only of cars in which the outer body panels can be removed. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Base unit constructed cars. Let's do that. I And I, I'd, I'd probably <clears throat> go for the S-Tora, like I've said before. It's yeah. just it's that much more special. And if we have those combination of cars, we could legitimately wear um, Polonex all the time, couldn't we? Because yes. we'd look a little bit exclusive just a yeah, little bit. That's a good point. Yeah. So we maybe we'd have a fictitious architectural design um, company. <laughs> Would be Smith and Sniff Architects Consultancy. I well, I mean, 
I've, I've mentioned this before, though, that I I just really want a company with industries on the end of it because it sort of sounds sinister, but also very much epic. Like you just you do lots of stuff. Yeah. So I, I'd quite like Smith and Sniff Industries Limited. S and S Ind. Well, when 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 Morgan were talking about the outgoing S and S engine, I kept. Oh yeah. <laughs> when people say S and S now, I default to thinking it's Smith and Sniff, and I was thinking, can you imagine if we, imagine if we just I don't know cobbled together a, an engine that we've managed to sell to a car <laughs> company. <laughs> That's one of those things, Matt. Right? I always think I know how an engine works on paper, but yeah. I, I honestly. The complexities involved in the actual execution of an engine, even quite a basic one, even one on carbs, because I couldn't get carbs running right. I'm not one of those people who can set up carbs. It would just elude me. The thing, it, the thing would be doing two miles to the gallon and belching out smoke because <laughs> it's the running so rich. Be running so rich, the there'd just be eyes running everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, actually, now talking, I don't know. This is reminding me. We, we said last week we might do some readers messages and we've completely forgotten but i did just want to say a hello and a thank you to a chap called david wilson who he said he'd heard us briefly mentioning apparently it was in podcast 94 uh, uh doing a glossary maybe for our patrons of all the shit that we talk about just so that people can get up to speed with in jokes and things and he's done a list which he's also sort of called what? podcast bingo and it's just a huge Amazing. list. There's 88 things on this. I'll stick it on the Patreon. 88, 88 things that we have mentioned. I think. I guess things we've mentioned more than once. So some of them at the top, obviously, is sports. Ah, um, Sport. And transit. Uh, Sharday's up the top as well. But there, <laughs> there's some stuff where I was like, did we mention this and mention it more than once? Um, such as vocoder toss. And yes. uh, entry number 15 simply says clacker bag. <laughs> so yeah, uh, there is it's a bit a, of that. What about DSG it's, tromboning? It's got to be. Yeah, there, that's right? in there. I can't oh. remember where it is. Oh yeah, number forty-three, DSG tromboning. Um, is it really eighty-eight things? Is bomb, it bobbins? Yeah, because that's is. my favourite number. Is it? Yeah. If I ever. 88? Yeah. If I ever became a professional driver or I needed numbers on the side of a car for real, it would mm. be eighty-eight. Yeah, I do love it. Just because of Back to the Future. It's not actually. It's just because written. I just think sort of stylistically, it's a great pair of. I do. I, mean, I love the. I love eight because it just reminds me of a entry level scale electric slot racing track. So I just. Oh, think, yeah. I just thought eighty eight is. I mean triple eight's too much, and it's also yeah, you know, yeah. A, it is already a racing team kind of. So I thought. Yeah, eighty eight. Don't, yeah, don't overdo it, but eighty eight. No. Yeah, good. I can see that better than eight, but not not showing off like triple eight. No, exactly. Yeah. Exactly that. Fair enough. Well, there you go. Apparently, uh, according to David, we uh, we we we've got some of these. About fifty-seven ankle uh, ankle cuff trackies. Yes. Yeah. Um, is is a good one. And fifty-nine is Damon Albarn. Uh, it's Damon Albarn Sussex. Well, I think it's just it's just Damon Damon Albarn Sibilance. Sixty-nine is Richard Watson up GTI. I haven't mentioned that for a while. Um, uh, yeah, well, that's I was almost say, become though, more frequent than Zoe Ball talking about Brighton. I had no, I haven't mentioned it for ages. Anyway, I've got, I've, I've kind of, uh, I've, I'll mention this. I'm, I'm selling my Porsche though. Is the headline? Are you? Yeah. Well, we're buying a house, and the truth is, I just need some money, so it's going to well, get that's... rid. I'm but selling then we'll a house. Need another car. Um, yeah, if anyone wants to buy it, it, please just give me strong money for it, and then my life will be a little bit simpler. That'd be great. Well, next week we'll just do a podcast <clears throat> where we just hawk shit that we need to get rid of because um, I got I got, got told to move my cars off the drive and they were taking pictures of the house, which annoyed me because I thought it made the house look better. But there we go. The barn find I went to see and film yesterday. The lady only mm. had a couple of pictures of the car that we pulled out um, from when it was newer. Yeah. And one of them was she found the particulars of the previous house that she sold, and it was photographed by the estate agents with it on the drive, oh, with a, with a cat good. smelling one of the back wheels. Because <laughs> you know, cats like and dogs are like smelling a wheel of a car, don't they? Yeah, probably well, it's for other. Yeah, exactly. And um, and so she had two photos: that one, and the other one was her cat in a harness in the passenger seat because she used to take it on road trips in the car. It was just, you couldn't make it up. It was just brilliant. 
Wow. She used to take a harnessed Siamese cat around. <laughs> and just it's just really, really quite cool. Yeah, it's really harnessed Siamese. Uh, <laughs> that's your that's your peel session. Uh, right <laughs> I've got a, I've got a short letter because well, I mean we've got a terrific backlog of letters. That we're, we're, I'm very sorry to everybody who does does write. We do read everything. I promise. Mm, mm. Um, guy called Andy Eldershaw messaged to say, um, I owned a Porsche 944 after listening to your Porsche 944 chat the other week. I had a 2.7 in Baltic blue with matching interior. Porsche make all of the parts and the blue velour interior is great great compared to more modern drab offerings. The four cylinders smooth and torquey whilst not that fast by today's standards. But it is the perfect GT car. The tyres are like balloons and incapable of pothole buggery. His words, not mine. And also, the rear seats fold completely flat. I have fitted my five-foot-long miniature steam engines in the back with no issues at all. Ladies form an orderly queue. I won't harp on about the balance because you know how good it is. All the best, Andy. There we go. Andy fits steam model railway tra- uh, trains in the back of his 944. Uh, and I'm, and I'm how... got a lot, I've got a lot of time for Andy as a result. Now... <laughs> My question is, when you've been somewhere, presumably he's taking them somewhere like a show or whatever to to yeah, drive them around a bit. Yeah, like a steam event, yeah. Or How long do you have to leave them before you can pick them up and put them back in a car? Because they oh. must be bloody hot. It's a really good... Maybe you have to have... Maybe you have to stay over. It's got to be an overnight event. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, is there... Yeah. Boiling. Well, they are boiling. Well, well they, they are That's boiling. They work, That's sort but... of the principle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you Bloody are... hell! That kettle's boiling. Yeah, I know. That's that's the point. Of Hence it. the expression "boiled kettle." Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I. Uh... <laughs> yeah, but you said it with the wrong emphasis. There, you made it sound like some kind of dish that you'd get in a, in a broad. Uh, yeah. Well, we went. To, we went to Portugal and we tried the boiled kettle. It was surprisingly nice. <laughs> <laughs> we did have, anyway. we did have, there was another Porsche it was a 924 because remember we, we talked about 944s and 24s didn't we the other month yes and uh, someone yeah someone also talked that they've got a they've got a, a a recap of a 924 experience the title says 924 experience memorable slash long leet oh okay long leet in the early 2000s, this is by um, a guy called Nathan Tandridge, which is a great sounding name. Nathan says, in the early 2000s, I had a two litre 924 that I bought for 750 quid. My justification to my wife was that it was far better quality than, than the cars we usually ran and therefore sensible to spend some of our se- uh, savings on. Most of which had been for the wedding gifts uh, and things earlier that year. That proved to be wildly inaccurate because I ran it for five months during my five years of ownership. Oh, God, that's not very good, is it? Just done the maths. Plagued with electrical problems, it constantly <laughs> broke down. It set itself on fire twice, and ultimately it ended up being dumped under the carport and became infested with wasps. <laughs> <laughs> the, final st- the final straw was What that I- kind of cursed car was this? I don't- Wait, it says the final straw that took it off the road was a stressful, eventful camping tour in Somerset. We'd optimistically decided to visit Longleat Safari Park. Back then, mm. we didn't have um, we didn't have mobile phones. Um, oh no, we did have mobile phones. But as it turns out, reception in the middle of a safari park in Somerset was patchy at best. We'd noted preemptively that should you break down in the park, you're supposed to phone for help or sound your horn. Shortly mm. after the dreaded monkey enclosure, the inevitable happened: the engine cut out. And wouldn't turn over. Mm. Not only that, none of the electric seemed to work at all. So we couldn't sound the horn or drop the windows because oh electric God. and had no phone <laughs> signal. <laughs> we considered getting out to start walking as the only wildlife nearby appeared to be some fairly innocuous looking bison type things. <laughs> I love the fact that he's not even admiring the actual wildlife that's around him. Bison type things. <laughs> but thought better of it. Um, after a few minutes of sweating, we figured we were on sufficiently an incline to try a rolling bump start. Happily, on the third attempt, the car actually fired up 
Unfortunately, it wanted to cut out again unless I held it over 2,500 RPM. The next 10 or 15 minutes were to be one of the more stressful events of our younger days, primarily as the, the, the lion enclosure came next. The entrance to the heavily fenced enclosure is through an automated gate system that allows six or so cars through. It's a sort of holding bed before the second gate opens a couple of minutes later. I cannot adequately convey the stress of waiting what felt like hours in front of both sets of gates, <laughs> revving the absolute arse of my poor man's Porsche. <laughs> Once our group were released into the enclosure, the car's head started crawling at walking pace. <laughs> Alas, I couldn't hold back any longer as I feared an overheating situation, so I just had to overtake all the other cars. <laughs> and skirt around the edge of all the animals. Huh? We basically safari rallied our way to the end. We stopped back in the car park, completely shaken and embarrassed, but relieved it hadn't got worse. The rest of the holiday was actually great. We overheated in Bristol. We burnt a hole in the tent from a camping stove. And oh, and the cam belt went went on the way home to Kent. Oh my gosh. So there we go. He said I'm still married and I should add uh we eventually can look back at those days and laugh. All the best, Nathan. <laughs> well, I mean, I was quite stressed just reading it, but it was quite yeah. funny. There we yeah. go. High revving 924 in a lion's enclosure. Uh, so the today's lesson must be uh, uh, buy a 94. They're probably quite good, but buy a good one. Don't don't buy a, a, a shonky one that ultimately becomes a massive wasp's nest. I think that's what we should do. Uh, should be one of our should be one of our like road trips. It should be a car that's very temperamental, very temperamental and we have to take it I don't it get any pleasure from that I, no I, I don't, don't. I, I don't I don't get I, I think some people quite enjoy the challenge and they oh well I can roll my sleeves up and fix something now and I, I just don't I'm afraid I find it inordinately stressful uh, says the man who's got an old Range Rover but, um, <laughs> I was going as to I say. established a couple of weeks ago it's okay it's okay it went past its MOT last week past its MOT no problems so wow. it will now go wrong definitely because I've been far too <laughs> cocky about its integrity recently anyway um, we should we should bring this to a close uh, but before we go uh, three things to tell you they are one Johnny has a solo YouTube channel called The Late Break Show you know that by now go there and watch one of his many excellent videos too i've got yeah. various books out one of them is called boring car trivia three it's got an introduction by johnny and lots of boring trivia by me i think the subaru electricity company fact is in there somewhere and the uh, the third thing i've got to tell you is that the famous nelson mandela house the tower block out of only fools and horses was actually in bristol not peckham was it or is they, it they filmed a lot of only fools and horses in bristol like the exterior scenes i didn't know and that yeah, I think the, the the full story is that in very early series and in the, maybe the titles, the the tower block you can see is in is in London, in South London. But the uh, the exteriors for most of, it, including like Dell's Lock Up, that was all done in Bristol, and the oh, pub as well. When they used they used various different pubs for the exterior of the Nags Head, but they were all pubs in Bristol, not in London. That's so brilliant. I would have been living I would have been living around that that West Country area when they were filming some of that shizzle. That's mm. cool, brilliant. Did there not know go. that. Huh? Love your facts. Reading. You absolute fact are <laughs> you. <laughs> I am fact yeah, right constantly on a fact hunt. <laughs> well, that's it then. That's that for this. That's that. <laughs> Thank you ever so much for listening. Uh we'll do it all again next week. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye. Safari pops. Shitaki mushrooms. <laughs> Shitaki. <laughs> Shit egg mushrooms. Ooh, I love I love that. Oh you bastard.